what's up everyone i had this interesting spot on the final tape today so wanted to analyze it and i thought i might as well make a quick study video out of it enjoy because i played the blue 150 net trade today and we're on the stone bubble of this tournament at overlay today so that means the min cash is especially big and it was a 736 dollar min cash and a 150 dollar buy-in so absolutely crazy and i was put in this weird spot i was obviously playing icm aware during the final table and suddenly i found myself as the short stack on the stone bubble of this like 20 man sit and go i think 25 man pretty short, small field and i was clearly short a stack faced the jam here for 10 big blends expected him to jam a lot he jammed like four in a row here as well obviously i can call more now being the shortest stack but i wasn't quite sure about this one I decided to call um let's find out if that was actually the right decision or not so we're gonna get have to do this from the get go because there's no uh, huts on an eight, so I gotta do it manually. So let's quickly set this up. First of all, we should set up a sit and go format. Um, create new sit and go. Um, other. So let's put in payouts. It's two thousand thirty eight dot seven seven one two two five dot o eight and 736.13 so um let's put this in what i always wonder about these spots right now is i guess it knows really top heavy yeah whatever let's put it in four people um create new blind level the big one was a 2400 and the ante was 960 divided by 4, um, like 240 as well. Should be close enough. That's actually, actually exact. So 10% ante. We find ourselves in this spot four handed with the cutoff having 83,089.7 chips, 7.4926, 7.6, 7.7. Seven, seven, and there's me obviously with. 23, 24,000 exactly, exactly 10 big brands. Wow, that's crazy. No, I have 22,000. No, it's 24,000. Yeah, it's all good. Kind of looks weird when you put in the big brands since you don't pay attention, man. It's much too close, I guess. And now he goes all in and you want to calculate the Nash range first. So he should be jamming 77% of hands. And this is our calling range in the spot. And King C makes it in there. This is pretty accurate, honestly. <laughs> this is this is kind of what I would have called here. Obviously, with these guys being so deep, we can call quite a few hands. Um, man, this is like holy shit. This is pretty accurate. This is what I would be calling here. I kind of surprised that surprised that Ace off performs better than Deuces. I guess because it dominates more hands that he's jamming. Maybe I don't know. Kind of weird. Let's, let's tighten his jamming range a little bit from Nash. I think it's kind of reasonable, honestly, to expect him to jam very wide in this spot. But I'm just going to quickly narrow it down a little bit and see if he's still making money. And then we have to be much tighter. So it really comes down with his jamming range, but I think it's not unreasonable to expect him to be jamming like 80% almost everything there. So um, King's Serum is a call, but we can also take out hands like aces and kings and queens and probably checks and maybe tens and maybe even ace king from his jamming range because we expect him to induce with those hands in some type of way and then we're getting a call again but this is also tightening his jamming range a bit because i think it's unlikely it would be folding and i had like seven six suit in this spot you know with, with him covering me quite a bit and just relentlessly jamming the last couple of hands as well i do believe we do see more of these hands and Seems like I went for the right call, even though it's close-ish. King 6 I thought was too good to fold, but yeah. Um, what we can do right now is, let's put one of these stacks really, really short. Let's put this guy into like 20,000 chips, so less than me. And now we're going to calculate the whole thing again. And yeah, <laughs> suddenly we are only calling this hands. This makes like a lot of sense. Obviously, we're facing like a big min cash. Um, I'm clearly short stack, so I can make these calls with King Six Suited. Otherwise, I would just fold. This is like totally not surprising. Pretty happy to see the results like that, because I was wondering like maybe because there's 30 big ones, they should still be tied just because um, maybe they punted or whatever. But they were all playing pretty ICM aware, 
from what I've seen, you know, nobody was going for crazy three bets or anything at this point. So I guess we just went for the right decision. He ended up having pocket sixes. Um, we didn't get there. I stone bubbled, which obviously sucked for such a big min cash. But you know, shit happens. Kind of just interesting to look into these hands and get the result. That's all that matters. Hope you enjoyed this little snippet, quick study. Go on with the rest of your day. Have a good one. Peace out.